So this is the sorry. All right, so what we're going to do is measure the density of a known water in a liquid form in an unknown, which we don't know, right, which is purple according to this thing over here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of different instruments. Number one, we're going to use a balance. Number two, we're going to use something called a graduated cylinder. A graduated cylinder is used to measure volume. You have to look at this thing. We can see there's little marks on the side. And we're going to measure to the bottom of what we call meniscus. Other things, this container is a beaker. We use it to store things or do reactions. And this is a pipette. And we use it to transfer liquid from one container to another. All right, so we're going to have two different variables here. The first one is going to be the independent variable, which is going to be the volume. And we're going to measure two centimeters cubed or milliliters. 4 milliliters, 6 milliliters, 8 milliliters, and 10 milliliters of water. Each time we take, we go ahead and put the volume in there inside our graduated cylinder. We're going to mass it out. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take a reading or mass, just the empty graduated cylinder. Because we're going to add water and we only want to go ahead and get the mass of the volume inside the graduated cylinder, not the graduated cylinder. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and use our pipette. And we're going to go ahead and add, all right, let's get dinner, water to it. And we're going to add exactly two milliliters. And then we're going to put in our balance. It's going to give us a reading. So that's our reading for two milliliters with the graduated cylinder. All right. Four milliliters. Six milliliters. Eight milliliters. And ten milliliters. Okay, so that's what we know. That's the water. Um, we're going to use it to figure out its density, which is what we call an intensive property, which means it doesn't matter how much I have, it should be consistent. Okay, so that was the water. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a different graduated cylinder. This time we're going to want to take a look at the unknown, purple. And we're going to do the exact same thing. First things first, that on there. Make sure we take the reading, right? That's how much it actually goes ahead. And that's actually the mass of an empty graduated cylinder. This one that I'm going to use for the unknown. Bottom of the meniscus. So there's our mass of 2 milliliters of the unknown. Four milliliters of the unknown. Six milliliters of the unknown. Eight mil is the unknown. And ten mil is the unknown. So now we have all of our data. Go ahead and calculate. Actually, we can calculate something, but what we can do right now is plot the mass of the volume of whatever we had, two, four, six, eight, ten, versus the mass of just the liquid. 
Let's try that again. Okay. So we can go ahead and take the volume, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We have all those. That's the independent variable. And what we measured would be the dependent variable. And we, what we can do is figure out the mass of the water without the graduated cylinder, the mass of the unknown without the graduated cylinder. From that information, mass and volume, we can put into a graph to determine our slope, which tells us something which we'll talk about later.